Hi guys, it's Rune, the math person. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you don't want to be bombarded with all these new videos, make sure you turn off that notification. Other than that, let's just dive right into this question. In this video, I'll be going over question 109 on SO exam P. So pause the video real quick and try to calm yourself. Okay, assuming you're tempted, let's just dive right in. So they say an annual premium, so I'm going to write the function for f of b is equal to an exponential function with a mean 2. So that's 1 over 2 e to the negative p over 2. And then they also say the annual claim for C, where C is claims, is equal to 1 e to the negative C over 2, right? Because they're saying it's an exponential with mean 1. And they also say the premiums and claims are independent. So we know the joint function of C comma P is just equal to f of P times f of C. So then this is equal to 1 half e to the negative P over 2 times e to the negative C. I don't know why I put over 2 here. This is with a mean 1. And we're asked to find, and then we know that x is the ratio of claims to premiums. And then we're asked to find the density function of x. So we don't know what density function of x is, but it's easy for us to find the CDF of x, which we know is the probability that big X is less than little x. So plugging in that big X in here, you get this is equal to the probability that C over P is less than some little x. So then that is equal to probability that c is less than x times p. So, and then what, where is c ranging from? c is an exponential, it's, so it's going from 0 to xp, right? Because that's what we're looking for. And we know p is also exponential, so it's going from 0 to infinity of the joint function here, f of cp, evaluating respect to dc first, and then dp, where c is the claim and p is the premiums. So plugging in our function, you get 0p, 0 to xp. Our function here is 1 half e to the negative p over 2 e to the negative c, dc, dp. So when we integrate in respect to c, everything is a constant then, so then it just becomes keeping the outer shell here, 1 half e to the negative p over 2 times negative e to the negative c, integrating from 0 to xp, dp. Okay, plugging in the xp for c, you get negative 1 half e to the negative p over 2. Right here, plugging in the upper limit, you get e to the negative xp minus e to the 0 is just 1. So this is just 1. And then multiplying this out, you get 0 to infinity. The first term here is going to be negative 1 half e to the negative e to the negative p over 2 e to the negative x over p minus minus that becomes positive one half e to the negative p over two dp so taking the antiderivative it's i think it's easier easiest for us to think about it like this e to the negative so this is technically the same thing as negative one half p minus x p so you can actually factor out the negative p out so you get one half plus x on the inside negative p one half plus x plus 1 half e to the negative p over 2, taking that integral in respect to dp. So then this is equal to, remember how if it's like e to the negative 6x, and you take the antiderivative, this becomes negative 1 6 e to the negative 6x. It's the same idea here, the negatives cancel out, so you get 1 half e to the negative p 1 half plus x, and you divide by that 6, so you do the same thing, you divide by that 1 half plus x in here, plus this inner, inner this antiderivative is going to give you a negative e to the negative p over 2, integrating from 0 to infinity. Plugging in the upper limit here of infinity, you're just going to get 1 over a really, really big number, which is just 0, and then same thing on this side. So this is going to be 0 minus. When I plug in 0 for p, you get, for this one, 1 half, 1 half plus x, e to the 0, which is just 1, so this just becomes 1 here, plus here, if I plug in 0, you can just get 1, and then simplifying this out, this is essentially the same thing as 1 minus 2 times 2, which is 1, 2 plus one, x, that's 2x, and this is again equal to the f of x, the cdf of it. We know we want to try to find the f of x, the probability distribution function, which we know is just the derivative of CDF. So then this is equal, is equal to, when you take the derivative of 1, it just becomes 1, 0. You can think of this technically as like 
1 plus 2x to the negative 1. So then the negative 1, you bring it out, so it becomes positive. Um, 1 plus 2x to the negative 2 times the chain rule here times 2. So this is equal to 2 over 1 plus 2x squared. And that is our answer B. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye.